Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to determine the amount of charge, excuse me, the amount of charge that is stored on parallel capacitors. This is the circuit we're going to use. We have a 12 volt battery, 12 volt voltage supply, and we have C1, C2, and C3, a 12, a 6, and a 5 farad capacitor, respectively. Um, a farad is kind of a big number as opposed to a nano or a microfarad, so we're going to just going to use whole farads just to keep this math pretty straightforward but of course you would do the same process if you had microfarads or some fraction of a farad okay and this rule also applies whether you have one two three four five or however many capacitors you have as long as the capacitors are in parallel okay and the way it works in the beginning here it's pretty straightforward we have three capacitors they're each going to store some charge on them and that means that in this case, the way it works for parallel capacitors is the total amount of charge is just the charge stored on number one plus the charge stored on number two plus the charge stored on number three. You just add up this charge plus this charge plus this charge and that is how much charge is available if you wanted to then use that charge. Okay, So the total charge is equal to Q1, which Q stands for charge, plus Q2 plus Q3, and we say the total charge stored in the circuit. All right, if you think about we're moving charges, the total charge stored in the circuit is equal to the sum of the charges stored on the individual capacitors. All right. Now, if we want to figure out the total charge, there's a couple ways we can do it. The first way we're going to do it is we're going to figure out the charge that is stored on each of the individual capacitors. And then we'll check it by kind of figuring out the total charge. Uh, individual and uh, the total charge separately okay so in order to do that we're going to use what I like to call the capacitor equation Q the charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage it's kind of like Ohm's law V equals I times R but we use this equation for capacitors so I like to call it the capacitor equation all right so we're going to figure out the charge on each of the individual capacitors first so that means we're just going to take to get the charge on uh, capacitor number one we have to take the capacitance of number one times the voltage. And that's pretty straightforward because we're given the capacitance. And we know that when we have capacitors in parallel, the potential difference, the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the plates of that capacitor is equal to the voltage of the battery. That's the way it works for voltage for parallel capacitors. 12 times 12 is, of course, 144. So we have 144 coulomb that would be starred, stored on capacitor number one. Now we can do the same thing for capacitor number two. Q2 is C2 times V2. This one has a capacitance of six uh, farads. We said the voltage is equal to the voltage of the battery. Six times 12 is 72. We do the same thing for number three. Different capacitance, same potential across parallel capacitors as the battery, and we get 60. Now, if we 60 coulomb. Now, in order to get the total, of course, we just add them up. We found the capacitance, excuse me, we found the amount of charge stored on um, capacitor number one, capacitor number two, and capacitor number three, and our equation tells us all we have to do is add them up and we get the total. That means that if we add them up, we get 276 coulomb. Now, that's a lot of charge, but we're using whole farad capacitors, okay? But that's the way you do it. Now, the other thing we could have done to get the total charge, right? We found the charge on the individual capacitors. To get the total charge, we could have taken the total capacitance times the total voltage, right? We could just use this equation, Q equals C times V. We want to find the total charge, total capacitance times the total voltage. Well, the total capacitance for capacitors in parallel, you just add them up. The total capacitance for this circuit would be 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 5 is 23, and the voltage would still be 12 volts. Okay, that's the total voltage. The total capacitance will give us the total charge. So that means that 23 times 12 is the way we could figure out if we wanted to know just the total, and that also comes up to 276. And those two numbers should, of course, be the same. Whether we find the individual ones, and then add them up, or we just go ahead and use the total capacitance, the total voltage, to get the total charge. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I think it's pretty straightforward. You have to remember, 
your Q1s, your Q2s, your Q3s, different capacitance, same voltage. Get the, get the charges, add them up for the total. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.